This is Infection, the survival podcast, recorded live on Monday, December the 20th, 2021, for broadcast on Tuesday, December the 28th, for episode 363. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Um, Hopefully you had a Merry Christmas. Welcome back to Infection, the survival podcast. Normally, Infection is your source for the latest information on survival video games. We've got a little bit of a different episode coming up for you here as we are approached, as we have now passed the Christmas holiday and heads towards New Year's. My name is Nick Craig. You can check me out online by visiting my website, nickcraig.com. And I'll say a uh, ho, ho, ho to our friend Brian with an I, Aldridge. Hello, Brian. Hello. Hopefully you had a nice uh, Christmas and uh, Happy New Year to you. Oh, it's excellent. Happy New Year to you. I was looking forward to coming up. And uh, hopefully everybody here has had a wonderful Christmas and looking forward to a a special episode where usually we don't deep dive into one topic. So this is going to be fun for us. If you want to find me, uh, you can get me at Brian Aldridge on Gavin Parlor or my blog, biteoftech.com. But make sure you go check out our website, infectionpodcast.com. And check on the right-hand side where it says join our server on Discord. If you do that, you can submit news topics to the news channel. That's a really good way for you to uh, to be able to, maybe there's a game you think we should be covering or something that's come up in the news that we haven't seen. Throw it in there and we'll review it before the live show. I still have a, a workout group in there, uh, 10 ARC servers going, just a lot of different things that you can do. If you want to watch the video form, that's Twitch, uh, BitChute, D, uh, DLive, and YouTube. And of course, the audio only forms the lower hand right. So if you're looking to listen on a mobile device or uh, maybe at work and you can't pull up a screen, uh, we've got a lot of different options for you to listen to the podcast. If you're going to listen, I encourage you to pull up the show notes for that particular episode and follow along because we've got a lot of uh, a lot of links. We have videos, especially in this episode, where we'll be talking about a specific topic. Uh, we'll have some maybe some videos that we don't play, but they're good reference or videos that are, or articles that we reference to that maybe we won't go through heavily, but they're really good on the topic. So. Uh, really good opportunity in this episode to do that. If you want to support us, there's a support option up top to the menu or infectionpodcast.com forward slash support. We've got Prime Gaming Subs, Humble Bundle, Amazon Prime, uh, Subscribe Star. There's a lot of different ways that you can support the show. And if you're interested in doing that, make sure uh, you go check out our website for it. So yes, absolutely. And uh, we've had a lot of support over the past uh, couple of years now. And this is the first, as you mentioned, yeah. Brian, this is the first time we've ever done something like this. We normally, uh, our Christmas show, will cover game updates and holiday things. Mm-hmm. But let's be honest, it's kind of the same stuff every year. And there's been this recent trend in gaming. It's also yeah. happening on another on, on the other side of the aisle as well when it comes to people's finances, cryptocurrency, mm-hmm. blockchain, yep. NFTs. And we've seen that being traded between people on you know apps like Coinbase and things like that kind of brought it into popularity for the everyday Joe Schmo. And now we're yeah. starting to see the gaming industry jump on yep. blockchain technologies like nfts and arguably the biggest thing at least what i took away from the research i did brian was smart contracts which is very heavily yeah. based on the ethereum uh blockchain and the ethereum cryptocurrency so i guess we need to start off with what is blockchain as a whole yeah um, you know, what, what is it and how is it relevant to this? And we've got a couple of videos that we'll play, but for the, you know, to, to take it up as a, a layman example here, it's a ledger mm-hmm. for all intents yeah. and purposes. It's a ledger. It's a, it's a thing about it's difficult you know, to manipulate. No, yes. the thing is, is, is because the, it's made to be in an environment where people don't trust each other, which honestly, <laughs> the only time you have an environment where people trust each other is when there is like with game servers. You have a company that you believe is keeping accurate track of all your stuff and everything is happening. Well, if you want something where perhaps something's worth real money, you know, or you want to put a real value on something, are you going to trust Blizzard or, uh, you know, Activision, Blizzard, whatever? Are you going to trust their servers to accurately keep track of all your items, which we've seen uh, people get mad about, uh, you know, having rollbacks, uh, especially in New World. And this has been yeah. a lot of rollbacks of inventory and gold and everything else. Well, in something, if it were based on other types of technologies, first of all, they wouldn't have been able to manip- manipulate it to reverse it. Uh, but you know, it wouldn't have had this happen in the first place. So I, I think it's it's an excellent technology, and it's really exciting to see the discussion start 
of ways that you can use it because I think by the end of the show, I think you're going to see that there's a lot of things that this could be used for and maybe not in the ways that you think or maybe not in the ways that we're starting to see, you know, NFTs and all these terms that you're hearing popping up that we're going to be discussing today. Those are things that are new. You know, and and it's it's interesting to see they're still trying to figure out how do we use these, how do we make it relevant, how do we make it not some big scam. Um, some of these I think you will find are scams. Some of them I think have legitimate uses. So in it's, the timing of this couldn't have been any better. In doing some of the research over the past few weeks, yeah. uh, the Linus Media Group uh, they've got a t channel that they call Tech Quickie, and it just happens that yeah. about two weeks ago they just published <laughs> the, a video right when we were talking about doing this. Yeah, I mean, the we timing the could not have been. We're going to do this, and they released the video for us. So it was like, well, thanks. you know, Perfect. when you're a trendsetter, Brian, in the industry, like we are, <laughs> you know, uh, some people tend to latch on and not give us credit. Um, <laughs> so they did a phenomenal video on blockchain and gaming. And we're not going to play the whole thing, but I do want to play just a couple minutes of it because it does such a good job of breaking down what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. So let's watch about a minute and a half of this video opening about. You know, we, we know the terms like Ethereum and Bitcoin when it comes to cryptocurrency. Those are based on the blockchain. And we're not necessarily talking about Bitcoin or Ethereum, the currencies in video games, but we're talking about that back end technology. The technology so behind a, it. Yeah, let's watch a few minutes of this uh, Linus Media Group tech quickie video as they did a really good breakdown and describing how this technology all kind of fleshes out. With how big a buzzword blockchain has been in the cryptocurrency world, it was probably only a matter of time before video games hopped on the bandwagon. And indeed, we are seeing blockchain or play to earn games starting to surge in popularity. But how exactly does a video game use something like the blockchain? The basic idea is this, either the games are free to start playing or you pay some sort of upfront cost, often in crypto, to play the game. And as you play, you earn in-game assets in the form of non-fungible tokens or NFTs. In case you don't know what an NFT is, it's kind of like crypto in that it's stored on a blockchain, but unlike crypto, each NFT is unique. So they're often artworks, songs, or even memes. For gaming though, they tend to be in-game items like weapons, cosmetic skins, or other collectibles. But hold on a second. How exactly is this different from the more familiar system of earning items in-game through play or through microtransactions with regular or in-game currency? Well, probably the biggest difference is that because the assets are stored on a public blockchain, with Ethereum being a particularly popular one, players own the assets that they earn. And Brian, that's it right there. Cut and dry. Cut the conversation. We could wrap up the show right now. I could ask you where people can find you online. That's the whole conversation right there. And I think you're muted. Um, but that's the that's that's the whole conversation right there. The, these yeah. things are unique. Unlike, for example, how does a game like you mentioned New World? How does New World work right now with items? That stuff is just stored in in some sort of database. But they're not unique. Nope. So if I have Sword. There's a million other people that also have sword. Sword is not a unique yeah. item to me. It's in my it, it's in my database. It's attributed to me. But there's a hundred yeah. hundreds of thousands of other people that also have sword. Where, where it says you know how what's your count of this object? It's plus one is yeah. what it is. You know it, you get a hundred of them and it'll be plus one hundred of that object. Um, I think you have the other video. I think if you can get that played in the background, um, or I don't know if you want to play a little bit. But, Oops, sorry, but this one. They show, uh, because when they say blockchain, what's that mean? Uh, and, and really, it's blocks of, of data that are chained together in a way that you can't manipulate. So if, uh, let's say the green block on the left is trying to uh, create a new block. So when, when people are sitting there hashing the coins and doing all this, they're figuring out the next block. They're adding another block, and that's how they get a reward for it. Well, it's linked to the previous block. And then the next block is linked to the block that you're working on. So through the whole thing, that's why they call it a chain. They're from the first block of information all the way through is reliant on the previous block. So the first one is unique, but then as you add them, their data, it, there's an encryption key pretty much, or, or some sort of encryption type of key that is, or a hash that is saying, what the uh, what the previous block before it was. Now, if that ever changes, let's see one piece of data is changed, it breaks the whole block. 
or it breaks the whole chain because then everything after that will become out of date. It'll be inaccurate. Um, and so you would have to have everybody over 50% of the network agreeing to be able to override that. Um, so which, you know, if you have a big tons of computers on there, that's very difficult to do. So that's what makes it trustworthy because you're relying on there being so many people that no one person can dispute the ledger and do it inaccurately. Well, that and that's, sense? well, that's the key right there. Disputing the ledger. When we talk about duping, which is the, uh, which is the common thing yeah. of what you see in. Uh, specifically MMOs and things of that nature. Duping is when you can go in and say, okay, well, let's say I work really, really hard to get this, um, this di let's use Minecraft as an example, this diamond pickaxe yeah. that was really hard to get. I find an exploit and I can generate a hundred of these diamond pickaxes. Well, if each item was on the blockchain, there's no way to dupe it because I would say, hey, I have this item and the blockchain would say, no, you don't. That item doesn't, this yeah. this item's not in our ledger. And as you mentioned, unless doesn't the matter. whole chain agrees that I have this item, which they won't if hey, I can do you pause it. it where it's at right now on the screen? Yeah, Just I can. Pause it over there. Yeah, absolutely. So there we go. So what we're doing is, you see there, there's these various numbers. So there's the first one, the green one there, where it's the previous hash is 0, 0, 0, 0, because there's no block before it is the first one. Well, it creates a hash for pretty much a, a short little piece of code that gives. Think of it like a password, of, really complex password. Is. Yeah, and, and, and it's pretty much saying it's something based on the data that's in there. And so if the data inside of it changes, that password changes, right? That code. Well, they then store that hash in the next block. And then it comes up with its own hash. They're all linked together in that way. Well, let's say that you wanted to change one of these. You would have to change all of them after it. So if you change something recent, sure, you'd have to, you just have to convince you know, half the network, over half the network that that's changed there, you know, that, that that's a legitimate change. And, you know, the ones after it need to be fixed as well. But let's say you go back um, 50 transactions. Well, you know, the amount of time it sits there to, to hash and get a Bitcoin, you know, where they sit in there and they're trying to hash it and then they finally solve it. And then it, you know, it gives them a Bitcoin or whatever. Um, that, that process is what makes it so difficult because it takes so long to hash out one of them I mean, that's what all these computers are doing, eating up all this power, is trying to, to come up with this code to figure it out because it's a really complex thing to figure out the one that matches that. It takes a lot of processing time. They're just creating stuff that makes you super busy for the sake of making it difficult. And that's what they've done here to where if they were to change one thing, they would then have to also go and hash out all the ones after it and you could never do it in time. I mean, it would just no. take, it would be difficult. And this example Very is difficult. one, two, and three, but imagine if this was... 98 99 and 100 <laughs> yeah. you know just yeah, I mean, it, and if you want to add change more, the value more, more complex you want to change the value of 100 well then you also have to change the value of 99 and if you change the value of 99 then you have to do it 98 97 96 you have to go all the way through the chain and that's that's impossible to do you won't find it that's just not possible to do at least where we are right now that's what makes it yep. get it duping that's the example yep. you can't dupe can't yep. say i've got 100 pickaxes if 100 pickaxes don't exist on the blockchain. I can't make that up. The blockchain is going to go, no, you don't have this. We, this is not in our ledger because everybody's got access to the ledger and the server will say, no, you do not have this item. You don't. You just don't have it. And then here's something that's a concern that's been coming up recently for me. Uh, first of all, China. Remember weeks ago, we talked about how China banned mining Bitcoin inside of their country. Um, other countries have been discussing doing it, doing it for uh, you know, save the earth type of reasonings. And this is something that concerns me because what does it take to be able to trick the blockchain and to put whatever you want in there? 50%? Uh, 50%? 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 plus percent of one. the users, right? Yeah. 50 plus one of the users. Uh, that's something, it, they're doing nothing by making people not be a part of uh, Bitcoin mining other than making it easier for a government with a supercomputer to go in and, and override it. To me, that's the concern. Uh, all these technology, all these, they seem to be oppressive governments that keep coming in here and saying, don't use block, don't well, use Bitcoin, don't use Bitcoin. What are they really doing? They're taking off numbers from that, that computing chain to make it where it would be easier to be a 50, 50%. That's well, think concern. about it like this. That's a little conspiracy, but 
well, let, let, let's think about it like this. Let's use an example that we're probably all familiar with. A stock, the ownership of a company, whoever, is, yeah. oh, whoever controls 50% plus one of the company is the majority stockholder. Decision. They get to make yes. the decision. And that's for all intents and purposes what the blockchain is. So you're right. In a future where a bad actor can get a hold or get control of the 50 plus one majority of the blockchain, they could, in fact, rewrite the ledger. But the likelihood and of that happening is very, very low as more well, and more the, nodes are online to examine that blockchain, take, right? Taking into account the well, but taking into account with China, they currently have the biggest uh, supercomputer that's using um, that, that, that that's able to do a lot of these computations. If they can sit there and overpower the network, China as a government would have the ability to make changes and to manipulate this. And once it's manipulated by one, the thing's worthless. It, if if they lose that trust and it's no longer solid, because that's all that really sells this, it wastes a lot of power to do anything else. You could do some things much more simply and easily and cheaper if you weren't trying to make it difficult to make it to where it could overcome this. The second that, let's say, China comes in with their quantum computer and breaks the chain, blockchain, I'm worried that it that it won't be stable enough and people won't trust it and it'll it'll dump like. That's why I'm concerned with them taking people off the blockchain and, and having people not trying to compute them is it's making the numbers smaller to where they have the ability to possibly come in with enough compute computation power and overwrite. And from what I understand, and I didn't do any research into the crypto side of it because I was just specific on the blockchain side for gaming, is you can actually run a blockchain node at your house that has access and yes. you would pick what kind of ledger you are. I don't know exactly how it works. I've never set one up. I know a couple of people that do, but you are now part of that public ledger. You are a very small fraction of the majority that had of the minority. No. no, excuse me. You're a small fraction of the majority that has access of it, of the ledger. Think about it like an old school yeah. bank book. Like they'd have back in the, you know, the wild, wild West days, the bank guys got his book with all the transactions and who's got how much money. That's essentially what yep. you're storing, but in a digital way. And as, as in the case of the bank guy back in the cowboy days, Brian, he's the one that's got control of the ledger. He's got the pen yep. and he can say, oh, well, yeah, this guy had $100, but I'm going to just fudge the number and say he's only got 80. You're not going to be able to argue that. That's the, with blockchain, but it's the same way, except everybody potentially has access to it and can hold others accountable and make sure that the chain stays, the blockchain stays what it is which is a chain of data. Well, and this is this is the other thing. This only really counts. Well, okay, so you can get an archive. You know, it, when this is all kind of done, you can kind of turn your chain into an archive and it's no longer being adjusted, right? But at what point, uh, you know, it, my concern is that it's no longer relevant. So like with a computer game, how in the world are they going to encourage people? How are they going to do the processing? Like blockchain's cool as a concept, but if there's nothing keeping it secure, then what? Then what's the point? Who's going to be doing the, um, you know, the mining to be able to make this a thing that is difficult? Because if you're just keeping track of items with it, it's not really secure, right? If you only have right. one server or two servers oh, that are yeah. sitting there and maintaining the thing, you know, and they're not really ever they're not really ever to verify, and it it needs to have a big network to do this. Oh, that's um, the key. It, just adding a little blockchain to your, like a little local one and having it be, you know, internal, that's not really accomplishing the goal of blockchain. So, you know, people are using the technology as a way to keep in track of things. But if you make a little mini blockchain and you're using it only for your game, how are people not going to override that? Well, let me ask you this. I guess in the future, and I, I, the deep, the examples are not just quite, the examples just aren't there yet. We don't have yeah. big AAA games that have it, but I would assume in the future, and again, not an expert on this, did enough research to be dangerous. I assume, Brian, in the future, if you take a game like Ark, for example, mm -hmm. and Ark implemented blockchain, if you play Ark on your computer, I would assume it's going to have some sort of copy. Of, you will have some sort of the blockchain on your computer. You will be one part of that ledger that will build the network. But who's going to be the who's going to be doing the mining to add a new sec, new piece of data to the blockchain? I have no idea. That's what I'm saying. It's like th this is all great concept until who's going to be doing the mining? Right now, there's a 
financial incentive behind the mining to get a Bitcoin. Now you could tackle on to another, like, you know, you could put your data in some other type of network, which would be the way to do it. You need to have something that has a lot going on already. And it's not just for this game, because if you only have five computers running a blockchain, that's not secure. You know what I'm saying? Like if there's five computers computing this and it's really not doing much, it's just, it's not secure enough. So, so that's, there, that's yeah. my thing. I just, I'm worried about that. And there are definitely some questions and concerns about that. Um, one of the other big things in the blockchain and, and when we talk about blockchain and gaming is a term or is, is a concept known as a smart contract. And yeah. for example, Brian, you and I make, we, you and I bet on a football game. I say, I'm going to, you know, mm -hmm. let's bet a hundred dollars that team A beats team B. Well, we technically have a contract, but yep. you now have to collect if, if you win. Well, what if I refuse yep. to pay you? We still have a contract, but I'm not going to, I don't hold up the end of my bargain. One of the other cool things with blockchain, and we talk, talked about a story about a kid being uh, screwed out of his, uh, his Roblox dollars last week because somebody got access to his account. Well, trading yeah. and things of that nature on a smart contract can alleviate that because the smart contract executes itself. When the conditions, yeah. when the terms of the contract are met, it executes by itself. It's an so, automatically so, so executing contract. So can you contract. program to like have it to maybe like send Bitcoin somewhere? Does, is it like a script? Does it, when it do actions like send money somewhere if some certain things are fulfilled from what i understand about a smart self, contract self, is self execute self enforce yes you know, exactly it, yes and, th and that's it is every so for example if you and i have a smart contract on the blockchain it goes into the ledger and everybody knows that brian and nick have a bet on this football game so yeah. at the end of the football game there's no choice whether i pay or don't pay out the contract will execute itself and it will take the in this case it will take the money or the item or whatever it might be so that's another key portion when we talk about block uh, gaming and blockchain is smart contracts. That is, yeah. that is a, a, it, a pretty important principle of blockchain, just as big as the, you know, the individual blocks and the chains holding them together and the hashes, the smart mm -hmm. contracts are very, very critical and very important. And Ethereum is, is a crypto that is very heavily based around smart contracts which could alleviate a lot of issues even outside of gaming as things move forward well but the thing is like, can't be edited so it's not, it, the correct. thing is you don't have revisions of these things once you put it on the blockchain it's set so you know if you're going to make a, a, a update to it you'd have to make another piece of data on the blockchain because that other one's still there you'd have to have a revision of your data that was on the block you know what you're marking as a revision an update um this, I mean, what's really useful for this is just anything you need to keep track of and you don't want anybody changing. Spoofing. Now, yeah. how does this work? How does this work in a video game if for an inventory system, it doesn't work in the same way because you can't, with an inventory system, you can't reverse it. It's a permanent inventory system. Now, one way, I don't know if, do you want to go any more into that Linux video or is there, um, or is there yeah, actually I do, that? especially if you're going to talk about There's it in a, more, in a I think I, I, we're getting ready to go to that topic and I figure we might as well do it with the video. Okay, let's do that. So if you earn some kind of sweet collectible, then something happens to the game servers or the developers just decide to pull the plug, your item will still exist on the blockchain and it will still have a value as long as there's demand for it. And the fact that it's on the blockchain could make it easier to move assets between titles, even from different game studios, since developers would have to do less legwork to enable this functionality. So imagine, for example, using a Fortnite skin in Call of Duty. Indeed, some popular blockchain-based titles, like Axie Infinity, already have large followings of people that are making a profit, sometimes a substantial one, on items that they have earned in-game, making it appealing to folks that want something more than just a better gameplay experience after plunking down their money. So that's an interesting part of this as well, because those items yeah. are publicly accessible on a ledger, skins and things of that nature or items between games now could be more possible instead of the developer having to implement the item themselves into the game and handing and handling who's who has the items now some of that stuff i believe could be handled on the on the blockchain from what i understand 
Yeah. And one thing, so here's the thing that I saw immediately when I kind of, when he said that at first, it triggered some thoughts in my mind of ways that they could use this uh, cross. First of all, look at a game right now. We buy a game and we own it on one platform. You go to another platform, you don't own that game anymore. Um, you know, so for licensing, it would be a way that you could purchase maybe a song and own permanently the rights to it, regardless of what platform or device you purchased it on, because you own, you know, a permanent license to that, that product. Um, they're kind of saying the same thing you could do in a video game where let's say you buy a skin, you want permanent owner, permanent ownership of that skin. Maybe that skin has to do with some sort of licensing with a, uh, you know, major movie uh studio or something like that well you could get to the level where you're actually purchasing a license to that product that's not tied to the video game yeah right so you're purchasing whether it's a movie a song um a video game asset or even the license to a video game you know a video game itself to where then they could decentralize them from the platform where you say i own call of duty modern warfare here's my token that proves that i own a license to it I can redeem that to play it on various platforms. And let's say that those platforms are now on a subscription basis that just lets you play, right? Regardless. Well, because right I now, think that that's, that's a big thing. Well, if you look at your Steam library, how do you own all those games? Well, because Steam has a database Steam. that says you, you own the game. If they ban you, you don't own the game anymore. If it, those are contracts to have the game. You don't actually own those games. If a, ga if a company wants to actually sell you a game, They'd have to use something like this well, what if, because that would be the verification, not Steam. Well, and if Steam, and obviously Steam has backups and things of that nature, but if somebody was able to get into Steam and wipe out their database, or they'd have no way to know. Anything, yeah. Without backups, it's yeah. stored in a database. And as we talked about earlier with databases in terms of inventory and games, it's incumbent on the server host, which in this case is Steam, yep. to have verification and say, Yes, you are Brian Aldridge, or yes, you're Nick Craig, and you own these games. But that's a database. Now, obviously, yes. they've got backups of the database, and things of that are stored, and there's transaction IDs and things like that. But at the end of the day, as Linus mentioned, if Steam shuts down, you're gone. You don't own that anymore. You don't own anything, because so the this... database, they control, they shut it down. You're SOL. I don't have a copy of the database. You, Brian, you don't have yep. a copy of the database. Steam has the only living copy of that database. Now, I think there are some still some things to figure out in this. First of all, how do we keep these things going? You know, uh, you know, people working on the chain and chain being maintained and computers sitting there to keep it from being overpowered and all that. Um, how do you have those going? Like we have a theory, you have certain ones that have a lot of people in there doing things, but when, it, when something dies, you know, you can have a record of that, but if it dies and nobody's on the doing any processing and working on it anymore, those numbers go, someone could edit the numbers again. I don't know. That, those are some of the future things that I don't know how they're going to deal with it. How do you make these things permanent, but don't allow people to go in and manipulate them? In Absolutely. The so it, it's going to be a tough thing for them to figure out. It is. And let, let's, let's just lay this out here. Brian and I are not experts on crypto or blockchain or anything from that. We just took this away from some of our research. So if we've got things maybe a little construed or a little bit back and forth, please leave us a comment here on, on, on the YouTube video. Send us an email, contact at infectionpodcast.com. Throw a message in the Discord or send Brian and I a private message. So now that we understand a little bit about the blockchain and mm -hmm. NFTs and, and, and smart contracts and things of that nature, I guess the next point and the next question is, Brian... Well, you need developers and you also need other individuals to hop aboard this. Yes. And while from what we just talked about, Linus mentioned there's hundreds of games and all this, but not everybody's on board. And we covered this story back a few months ago. Steam, the one that we were just talking about, they have banned games that are based on blockchain with NFTs. So yeah. the largest game distributor... On the PC, I'd even make the argument the largest game distributor anywhere, bigger than Microsoft and Xbox, the single platform, Valve and Steam, has added this new regulation that essentially bans the sale of games that use the blockchain technology on their platform. And that's a, if you're not on Steam, that's going to set a very, that's going to make it hard for mass adoption, right? 
Yeah, but Steve's really worried about this because it's taking away their ownership of anything. You know, the mm. second they start letting NFTs happen, because what's been the biggest argument between Epic and Apple and kind of Steam in the same way has been whole this whole licensing thing and the transaction fees and, uh, you know, where else can we sell and still have access to this? Uh, Steam does not want to give up ma maintaining and, and controlling what you own on their platform. The Which second is what that they, they allow NFTs and blockchains, they are releasing control. There's no way they want to do that because they don't have a way to confirm, uh, to make more money on the long term off that blockchain and NFT technology. It's a one-time purchase. You own it. Uh, you can take it away. That's there. What else on Steam can you take with you? There's nothing, nothing. on Steam you can take with you. No, you, you can, can send stuff and sell it, but you can't take anything with you outside of the service. You could take a screenshot of your achievements and uh, and, and maybe yeah, print that I mean, out. Yeah, and, yeah you and get that. Tack it up on the wall next memories. to you. Yeah, <laughs> tack it up on the wall next to your computer. And the reason, yep. and that's important to note, the reason that Steam has come out, at least from what we what we what we think, we don't know, but from the, why they've come out against it is not because there's technical issues necessarily with blockchain or NFTs, yeah. but it's because they lose control and. The game that was trying, the game that was recently denied by Steam when it got when it was trying to go through the publication, the verification process, was uh, the developer of the game is known as Space Pirate Games, and the de the game they develop is Ages of Rusts, and mm -hmm. they said that as a result we lost this battle with Steam. While a disappointment for the Age of Rust being removed, the point is more that of the fact that blockchain games as a whole are going to be removed. And that is going to be a setback for all. The dev says it believes that NFTs and blockchain games are the future and that it is upfront with Valve from the beginning regarding blockchain gaming and NFTs. But for them, it doesn't matter because Steam has pulled them off the platform. And according to their regulations, which is on their onboarding page, which you need to follow if you're going to be uh, bringing a game on, there's a rule and guideline, rule number 13 right here, Brian. Um, what you shouldn't publish on Steam, applications yep. built on blockchain technology that issue or allow the exchange of cryptocurrencies or NFTs. So yep. it's there's not much room for uh, reading between the lines. Steam seems to be very clear. They don't want games that use blockchain on their platform because they don't have control yep. over them, right? Exactly. And there's, they probably would be implemented incorrectly, I think, too, because I was looking up how many nodes does it take to be, you know, to maintain a blockchain. And they, they, they're saying it takes, you know, it could take like 100,000 computers. Now, in a big game, maybe you can keep a lot of those, you know, the client can be one that disputes changes, right? Um, but really, there's. I just don't see for a small little thing that's it's all by itself. How are they going to have a hundred thousand well, computers on there? And, well, you they're know, not they, all like, by. They them. have to jump on these big ones. In this case, they're. It's not all by themselves. A lot of these games are using, and the one that this one is using Public is ones, a right? company called Engine E N G I N, and they are a blockchain technology service provider that allows you, the developer, to use their ledger their blockchain to, to, for your game so you're not rolling your enough. own blockchain they're okay good that's that was my concern the so they're going to be saying but then how is that really any different than keeping a database at that point? because ev if because all of the it, you know what i'm saying because all of the games that use engine are all ledgers for all of the other games that are using and, and engine is not just for games it's for it's for it's for, it's for so, anything. so they've got enough Correct. people on theirs through whatever all the things that they're bringing in Correct. to maintain because that's the big thing that's what they've got to figure out if they can't figure out how for these games to have a ledger and have companies that are maintaining that ledger in a way that's not manipulatable uh that's going to be it and it, there's yes. it's going to take it that's the thing most people they think oh i'm going to make a blockchain game no you're not you, you've got to piggyback it on some sort of technology that already exists or else it's not blockchain that's and that's exactly that's what trying to, trying to get that across with this one provider, E N J I N, that's what they are. They are a blockchain. Cool. It's essentially a SaaS, a software as a service. They're providing that, 
to a developer the same way that service, yeah. well, the same the, the, the same way that a small developer is not going to roll their own servers they're going not in their own data center they're going to contract with AWS or Azure or somebody else to run their game servers similar thing with yeah. that they're using their infrastructure it, for it and that's how that and that's very kept. smart because one game alone most likely will, doesn't fill that you know there's very Correct. few games that that roll over 100,000 people concurrent uh, but so, if you get 10 games can working together, then they could maintain that. And it would actually be something that couldn't be disputed easily. Exactly. So that's, that's where steam falls on it. And again, from what I understand, it's not a technical issue. It's not a concern whether, Oh, blockchain yeah. is scary and not safe. It's steam makes a whole lot of money selling DLCs and add-ons and selling things licenses. on the store. I mean, really they're selling licenses. That's what, that's yeah. what they do. And they don't want NFTs and blockchains jumping in and, taking a part of their profit and while i don't necessarily agree with that as the consumer brian from a business standpoint it's kind of hard to argue with if that's a large source of large source of revenue and that could dry up yep. well that's not a good business move so yep. on the other hand we know that steam is a very large platform the largest on the pc gaming side but epic games has recently jumped in with their store as well. They just recently added their illustrious shopping cart feature that we had waited many, many months for. And Tim many Sweeney, on the other hand, least. yeah, Tim Sweeney, on the other hand, says it is open to blockchain gaming after Steam came out yep. with this ban. Uh, this ban. And Epic said that it is open to games that support cryptocurrency or blockchain based assets on its stores. Epic says that games would have to comply with financial laws and make it clear how the blockchain is used in their game, as well as have the appropriate age ratings. And it also says that developers won't be able to use Epic's payment service to accept crypto. They'll have to use their own instead. Case in point, you would use something like Engine or another provider mm. to handle that. Now, Tim Sweeney yep. has said that the company isn't interested in touching NFTs, but as that, that's them internally, but they're not opposed to third-party developers implementing an inco and, and co in, in coordination oh, but, using their own okay, services. Okay, let's, ta let's talk about NFTs for a second, though. Because I think if you used it correctly, because right now it's for art. I mean, it's it's equivalent of buying a GIF, right? For some of them I've seen, um, it, maybe it's, a, it's an object, like a 3D object, whatever it is. It's a block of code with something put into it that's encrypted that you have the ability to dec decrypt and view. Right. Correct. That's pretty much what an NFT is. But one thing that I found as a perfect example is let's say like Dungeons and Dragons and all the licensing that they have with their products. Because Dungeons and Dragons has to where you can purchase um, official and even on PDF, but you're purchasing the official license rights to that so that you have the ability to do campaigns and build campaigns based on that content. Well, if you were to do to where when you're buying the licenses to those products because they're printed books that you now have the legal rights to view if you purchase that license and you had it on blockchain as as your record um other products that maybe have access to let's say certain characters that you have you bought a book that has the ability for you to roll a certain type of a character well then in their game maybe you get that type of character so that way the the company that is behind it all you know dungeons and dragons and their characters and all that can have hold pretty much hold the license for a product that then they're able to use for subsidiaries or people that are using that world right i just think that that's a really good way that they could use it to where you own it's it's proving and you could even save the books on in the blockchain right and, yeah. and then you would have it and it's tied and then they can verify your purchase through that and not use because it's the same thing as them connecting to the server you know how you they say for Humble Bundle or for Amazon Prime or Prime Gaming in here, when you're going and verifying that you have a license to this video game and then they give you the thing attached uh, to your account. You're linking it to your Twitch account or your Amazon account. Yeah. Exactly. It's kind of that exact same process. You, They would just be going to the blockchain and verifying that you have that there and, and then it would work. So I think there's a lot of use for it that could kind of cross, cross over between products, but it really comes down to Here's a, here's a company who has a, let's say a Batman or a Superman or something that I want to have a license to use. Well, and, and as he mentioned, you could carry that over into other games if they were willing to collaborate. And exactly. that that's used to verify that you have the legal right to have it. 
yeah, and that that game. and that will likely be that could potentially be something that we see in the future there. So yeah, now we know where the two big uh, companies on the PC side of things fall. Steam no go, Epic open nope. to it, but they're still working through the process. So now let's look at Brian games and companies that are actually talking about doing some of this stuff in the real yes. world. Well, again, the timing of this is just kind of unbelievable. Um, as I was doing the show prep a couple of days ago, there I, I was searching for uh, you know blockchain and gaming and things of that, doing some research, and lo and behold, I came across a very interesting website and a very new, new interesting game, Brian. And it's not a new IP, but it is a new game. It's known as yep. The Walking Dead Empires. And this game is built on blockchain. It is a yep. blockchain-based game that is not, you know, some... Well, it, it is kind of a... It is a weird game. Not your traditional yep. uh, arc or rust or anything of that nature. But this is a mainstream very well known franchise the walking dead yep. implementing blockchain and they say on their website to scavenge craft and fight to survive the walking dead team up with your friends to create a makeshift home fight back walkers and rivals from the land that you own in the new blockchain yep. powered mmo and why does that why yeah does you, that you, you can you have land ownership in this and so if this, this is one way that they could have it to where that's a sought after in this game. Uh, if only one person can actually own a piece of land, you know, that's, it's a pretty big thing. I mean, if, if they can get it to where there's value, cause which is what NFTs is kind of trying to create as value off of a, a digital project product, which is what we do. But the second we purchase it, it loses its value, right? Cause it's only for you. Um, I get I assume this is a way that if you really wanted to, could you transfer these? I don't you so, can't really transfer these to other people. You can, can you? Not, they have I've to do that in the back end. I've got some information on that, but I want to watch this trailer first from this new Walking Dead, the Empire survival game, and we'll discuss after this. So while we you might not necessarily have taken anything away in terms of the blockchain from that trailer, I still wanted to show it. So as we talked about this game, this land ownership, Brian, why that's important. Well, if you own a piece of land, at least how this game is implementing it, if you own a piece of land, which you will be able, you'll assume, and I haven't had, I haven't played the game. I don't even think it's out yet. Um, if you go through and own a piece of land, which you will gain credit for by doing things in game and building up an in-game credit system. Brian fights and things that happen on your land or things that happen on your land, you get paid for essentially. So you own the same way that if you, uh, uh, Atlas did something similar. If people did things on land that you owned, you got a piece of that puzzle or a piece of that, that profit and in the case of doing it, in this case, with the blockchain, that's a pretty easy way to do it. If a fight is taking place in this sector of land that is owned by a certain player, well, they can just pay the rewards or pay the whatever it is to the person that owns that land. And that's something that's pretty cool. You're also muted. Thank you. Uh, one of the other thing I noticed on here is... Like I, I clicked on here to see what it would take to purchase a plot of land and yes. it uses a Bitcoin. I can pay with one of my other Bitcoin. You, you can. Know, can it, it, it's kind of just kind of crazy. So the ones that I earn because I use Brave Browser, it has its own theory. If I use their ad blocker, like it builds up a Bitcoin just from using it. Kind of like what you're. Uh, well, it's not building up a Bitcoin. It's building up, it's building up their own cryptocurrency, right? Well, it's their own cryptocurrency, but you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's something that I can turn around and use to, to purchase this. I guess. 
Yeah. yeah. And you can see here that the, the land Gala claims. And yeah. And this is the, the, the company, the, the group that's behind this one is Gala Games. And they're big. They're doing a lot of these uh, services. And, and, and that's kind of what they're implementing. And you can see the different pieces of land. And there's only certain numbers of them, Brian. For example, this dead claim, which is the uncommon thing in Georgia. There was only 2,800 of them in the blockchain. Only 2,800. And those have all been purchased. So now there's no way to purchase them from this. Same thing with this one. There was 160. There's only three left. And it goes up and up and up. 640 of this. Only 43 left. So you can see now how they have created scarcity with these. Yeah. And now this is they're uh, saying there's only a limited amount and there's actually only a limited amount you know of these that they're dedicated I'm assuming and that's they're, because I mean, the blockchain that. all of these things are already in the blockchain and they've got a predefined value a predefined hash and it's just deciding who is the ownership behind that um so this is now this doesn't and this doesn't have to be done on blockchain this technology no. could have been done with a database we've seen it with other games with yep. a database but doing it on blockchain gives it a, I think, a pretty lucrative advantage because of that public ledger, that trust, and the inability to go in there and change values if there's some sort of yep. glitch or exploit within the game. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this is going to be kind of the... This this is going to have to find its niche. Everybody's just throwing everything at the wall right now. Absolutely. Trying to see what sticks, I feel like. Uh, there's going to be very specific use cases where there is a real value to whatever it is they're placing on there. Right now, they're putting a bunch of things that are kind of worthless because, well, you know, trying to create value in it, right? They're trying to exactly. create a fake value. Mm -hmm. But I think there will be a point where there is something in a game that people hold. Just like, you know, remember in H1Z1, we had skins that people were buying for hundreds of dollars for some reason. It's a virtual skin, but you, you'll create the same thing in here where... There's a value behind it, and people want to make sure nobody can take that away from them. Maybe I would say that uh, not Elite Dangerous, but what's the other one? Um, Star Citizen by Roberts. Star Citizen. That's one where if you're buying a ship, that would be the perfect place for that because those are they're putting real world dollars on there, and people would be pissed if something happened and their their ship got deleted or you know they they didn't have ownership of it. Those are the kind of things where the people have an actual value placed on it that, and it really needs to not be manipulated. Uh, because these, you know, if someone is, if they're going to go in and, and hack this, they're going to hack it. But, but uh, I don't see this as something that people are really going to have so much value that it's a danger having it on anything but blockchain. I don't see that for Walking Dead. But I think it's a proof of concept for when we do have things that, you know, whether it's, transactions, ownership of something, uh, land, anything, real land, anything. I, I think we're going to get there and that'll settle into place as that's the way you do it. But I think right now we're just, it's still, we're throwing things at the wall, seeing what sticks. And I think most of this stuff won't stick. I think most of it's probably a waste of resources. To do. It's but more it, of a concept. It is more of a concept and it's more trying to figure out, you know, the technology is very powerful. There's no disputing. Yeah. I don't care, you know, I, I don't, I don't care what you say. There's no disputing that blockchain, uh, crypto, NFTs, and things like that, there is going to be some future with them. There's no argument about yes. that. The question yes. is, what is the useful implementation and what is the- and, I think and, voting, personally, voting, let's, let's say with voting, let's take a real world example where something, there is something that shouldn't be changed once you've done it, right? Yeah. That I think where blockchain is going to come into play is with voting, where once you register, you know, you're locked in. Like they start building that blockchain where you can't reverse a vote on the back end without breaking the whole blockchain, right? That is where it will make a big difference because you'll just be instantly creating that huge ledger, you know, on that night uh, and building it up. And then there's a record of everybody who voted and it can't be changed. And if it was changed, it would be known instantly because the whole ledger would be out of sync. So, so I, I just think that's kind of a use. Now let's go to another example, because not everything that we're talking about is necessarily inventory systems or land or thing mm -hmm. of, things of that nature. Stalker 2, which is the Stalker series is relatively popular. They announced yep. back uh, just about a week ago that they were going to be selling an NFT within Stalker 2 
that will enable one player, one singular player, to become the wor- the first ever metahuman in Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. The auction, which was scheduled to take place in January, will consist of players bidding on an NFT that will allow whoever owns it to recreate their face as a metahuman NPC in the Stalker 2 metaverse using that technology. The NFT can then be bought and sold up until a claim date, which is which was yet to be confirmed, uh, confirmed, and then a second drop will take place in February, though developers have promised that these NFTs won't influence the gameplay itself or give in-game advantages to other players. So in this case, they're just using the NFT. Uh, uh, this, again, is another example of them not necessarily having to use an NFT or something of that nature, mm-hmm. but they are. Well... That didn't work because they yeah, received an a lot, incredible amount of, of backlash about this. And Stalker 2 and the developers behind it, GSC Game World, announced that uh, they are not going to be moving forward with this. Um, yep. in, in their release, they said, Dear Stalkers, we wanted to give a detailed comment on yesterday's announcement of the NFT bonuses for Talker 2. Uh, Stalker 2. GGS World has is an independent game developer studio. Blah, 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 blah. Um, why did we choose NFTs? It's a new technology and we are eager to do NFTs right. Give certain fans an opportunity to get into the game without interfering with other players' experiences. That's why the tokens are entirely optional and have no impact on gameplay or story. Yesterday, we announced the first ever tokens. They go on and on and on. And then they essentially apologize and say that, well, no, that we're not actually going to do this. Uh, they said uh, they aren't even in the store yet, but some of you thought that we would go a bit too far from here. And that's why we want to be transparent in disclosing of our plans for future NFTs. And we are going to implement the nickname of the owners in some in-game desks, walls, etc., and they're not going to move forward with putting on the faces and doing things like that. Mm. So even though I think there's, well, uh, okay, let me, let me rephrase. I think the problem is here, Brian, there is a misconstruing. There's a huge misconstruction here about what NFTs are, what blockchain is and what kind of impact that has, because there doesn't, there doesn't, seem to be the need for a big amount of backlash at least in my opinion well and this it really this is the same as a kickstarter goal right honestly essentially yeah uh, it, it, they're they're offering a kickstarter goal except but there's just one saying, available yeah and so they're using that to make it so that there's ownership of it unlike a kickstarter goal where you know, you, you can go on there purchase something under your name and then they'll arrange with you before it's released to have whatever benefit put in the game if that's what you you did. Here, they're doing it on a blockchain and doing it in a way that's like a Bitcoin where it could be traded. So they're making it more like a Bitcoin where it's something that before the release of the game, you can trade this, right? And give it to somebody else and then their faces will be would have been in the video game. I just don't see how this was such a bad thing. They're, they're saying they're worried about where it would have gone. Uh, honestly, well, it was just a way... So, and how is the game even using this? Like these assets... I, it's just weird to me. How? Why does it need the NFT? It doesn't, and it other doesn't, than and they to let them move it around beforehand. It it doesn't, and they claim that they're trying to take this new technology and implement it. And I think the frustration with people is they saw this as a kind of a scammy cash grab for Stalker Two because people would have to be bidding. They're gonna. I, I, they didn't even announce what the bids, how the bids would be. They would be in some sort of cryptocurrency what cryptocurrency it would be, no idea. There wasn't any details. And then a few hours after that last statement I just read, Brian, they put out another statement that said, Dear Stalkers, we hear you. Based on the feedback we received, we've made a decision to cancel anything NFT-related in Stalker 2. The interest of our fans and players are our top priority for the team. We're making this game for you to enjoy whatever the cost is. If you care, we care too. So... The public backlash, the public outcry caused Stalker 2 to decide that they are not going to go forward with this. Not be- Again, not because of the technology and things of that. I think there's just a general 
misunderstanding and then a little bit of probably backlash in the fact of yeah. why are this this isn't really the use this isn't really a good use case for an NFT. Is, why this isn't is really a good use player, for blockchain. Yeah, why is one player getting like God mode? You know, and they're purchasing God mode. But they're not. I mean, it's just, just changing the I mean, face I mean, on the character. And that's the I whole know, it's thing. Just kind of, but that's it, the thing. Is they're treating it like it's God mode. I mean, they're treating it like this is going to drastically do something. And really, but it's all not. it's doing is the same thing as a Kickstarter <laughs> a perk. It's really, it's not. I'm just surprised that there was so much backlash other than everybody wants it, right? It, they, you know, people are pissed that one person's getting it. I don't see why there's any backlash to this because it's not affecting the game overall. Nobody's game experience has been affected. It's not affecting the game over, overall. So that's Stalker. Ubisoft. Let's, uh, a lot of, again, lot, this is all, yeah. ha and all of this news is within the last month. This stuff is happening yes. at an unbelievable rate. I mean, we are really on the, the cutting edge of this because. Everybody yep. is trying to figure out what's going on with this. Um, so they announced. Hey, do you want to play this? Do you want to play the trailer too on this one? Because it'd be interesting to see what. Because there's like a, a actual thing. Yeah. That let's um, see. Yeah. Let's go ahead and play the trailer first on Ubisoft Quartz. That's the name of this new system. So they have a serial number on the item that you need for you. Kind of like what the guns do, too. Attack. Exactly. And there's the tradable. Oh. So this is more of the example that I was thinking of when they're essentially taking their DLC, well, not their DLC market, but their, um, their skin market their item in their market. card market like like a little like a little cards you know kind of treat it like if you're thinking about you know, like baseball cards or playing cards yeah. type of uh, of those things with an item on it with all the stats and they're deciding to do that as nfts and why is that important well as as they just showed it that's not important but in that video what they showed is that there's a transaction history of who has previously owned this item or uh, items you can see a log of who's owned it right now if i have mm -hmm. a skin and i trade it to you there's no the only transaction history might be on Steam that shows I traded an item to Brian. But first of all, there's no way to really inspect your item and there's no way to know who else has owned that item. So you talk about creating value. Well, what if a large streamer like Dr. Disrespect or Summit owns an NFT or owns one of these things, sells it, and now the item that that item has got an intrinsically higher value because it was once owned yep. by a streamer. Or what 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 if it's the outfit that he won like a big tournament in? Bingo! You could Great have example. you could oh, and that's the thing is they have to get it. They before all this, they have to get it to the blockchain for it to have value, right? You can't just say okay, now I'm taking what would have been the skin. No, that has to be an object that he saw, somehow owns going into it. So there's only one, and it's actually the item, right, with a serial number or whatever it is he has on it that makes it unique. That's what you're winning. The only copy of that. And maybe there's a unique one that they start creating for tournaments alone that then you're purchasing the only copy of the skin possibly that looks like that one. Those are the kind of things that I see as real uses that well, and it might creates work. it creates value, intrinsic value yes. in things that let's be honest. Because no one else has it. That's the thing. Exactly. That's what people want. No one else has that object. If you can create that sense of uniqueness and no one else can have it that turns around and creates that instant value. If you're the only one that can have the skin that Dr. Disrespect won, you know, playing in some tournament or whatever, you name your favorite streamer. 
if you could have the one that's licensed, it's like getting the shirt from a basketball player that he wore yeah, during that the game. Jersey. Exactly. Or the jersey. Or, or the shorts. The, the jersey's there. The shorts are there. It's the exact same thing, but in a digital world. Because when you turn around and you try to go get the jersey off of that, you can only get one. Well, this creates that ability. Because before, there was nothing limiting it. Right? There's nothing to limit. They could they could say, oh, this is the skin. They could say that. But there's nothing tying it to it. But then they can create more later. You know, Correct. they could duplicate it. But with a real jersey that you wore at that time, you can't do that. And if they can get it to where the player goes in with something that's hard-coded to them, then it creates that value they can turn around and sell. Exactly. So, so it has the to first... be in place. They can't do it afterwards. No, exactly. And that this this to me seems to be a and by the way, of course, the community hated this as well. Um, <laughs> this to me seems to be a good a good first step for a large developer and publisher. Ubisoft is not some yeah. little guy in his basement. Ubisoft is a large company and they're going to be implementing this in their game Ghost Recon Breaking Point. And it will be very yeah. interesting to see how this all shakes out. And as the value of these things rise and rise and rise. And as a certain person owns it and sells it, it's going to be very interesting. And they've, they've got their whole new system, Ubisoft quartz. That's they're going to implement into, I assume all of their new games going forward. Yeah. And then you look at EA, for example, with all of their sports games, you talk about something that they could do in those games with, you know, FIFA's yeah. and NF and NBA's and Madden's and things like that. You could do the game football that, you know, you, you look at a big Madden tournament that, that gets played, as you mentioned with the gaming tournament. The football from that game is on the blockchain, and now that is a tradable, sellable item that has intrinsic value because it won yep. the Madden tournament in 2021 or 2022, and now I have yep. it. Nobody else has it, yes. Brian. I have it. Well, and okay, let's think of another thing even beyond this. Let's say for a company like Ubisoft, where they have a lot of different games, they have games on a lot of different platforms. Well, what if they have an they if they want to have an item that you own across every platform, which of course Steam doesn't like. Uh, <laughs> it, if they wanted to have an item that you could own across every platform, this is how they would do it. They would have this ownership outside of it, but then you would be able to access that, you know, because you own that item physically. You would then be able to access it across all of the platforms that are you know for this product I, that's that's a value that i can see and i think that that's why steam is so hesitant to, to embrace it is because they would have to hand that off to someone else the the verification of ownership and i think that this right here is once they get this i own that helmet let's say okay regardless of whether i log in an xbox pc or playstation i own that helmet that's the big difference Right now, you don't have that. It, you know, you can have that when they're linked over like Epic, you know, maybe an Epic account between all three platforms, but you're linking it through that service to do it. This takes that need away. You just, the game is linked to a blockchain and you own it without having to link to specific providers. Precisely. And the difference between the Stalker 2 announcement and this announcement is Ubisoft, on the other hand, told its employees in a uh, meeting that he held last week that... NFTs are just the beginning and they're not going anywhere. So Ubisoft seems to think like there is some value in future here and they're Yeah, I think it's kind of like Kickstarter. They view it as they, they view it as like a new thing that if they can get behind it because you know look at all the, the crazy the games that sold and everything that happened with Kickstarter when it first started. Uh, I think this is kind of the same way. They're viewing it this is an excellent opportunity for us to find other ways to make money that for, for the person receiving it feels like there's value to it because I think that's what they feel like they've been losing because really uh, you know th th there's not really any value in a game anymore most of them are subscription especially when you get to the Netflix level where uh, the games are generally free on a subscription well how do you tie that to anything you know how do you have value in it well this the value is in the game not the game itself and I think Precisely. that's kind of where we're going and I'll, uh, we'll wrap up with this Brian for anybody that thinks that this is not an industry that is worth anything, well, uh, VentureBeat had an article out, and in quarter three of this year, blockchain games, their NFTs generated $2.32 billion, which was roughly 22% of all NFT, NFT trading volume industry-wide. That's pretty impressive. 
And that's the thing is this is going to be for something that's more permanent. Uh, blockchain is not going to be for things that are, you know, data, lots of little data that's not really that important. I think this is going to get to where the, the licenses and things that you're going to want to carry over that are linked to an account or something like that, this, this will be the perfect use for that. Uh, I think we'll see as this kind of flushes out, you know, some of this technology will just be kind of pointless. They'll be like, oh, there's not the value. But I think until we see it in a game, we start building this value and seeing it in use. We don't know where the value is yet. And we're assuming where the value is. Um, and I think as we start seeing more of these things and people see, oh, I own this and it's no longer a company telling me what I own. That's the difference. And I think once people see that, then they'll see an actual value to the item. Because yes, when that company and, goes away, you lose it. And there is still a lot more to go with this. There is a lot that is still yet to be seen as these companies are all, it's kind of you know the old analogy of throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what pieces stick. Yeah. That's very much what's going on right now. And people like Ubisoft who are kind of leading the front on this, well, they're going to be the ones that are going to do a lot of the work for the rest of the industry and figuring out what works and what doesn't and what that road forward looks like. So um, there's going to be more parts to this, Brian, I guess we'll probably maybe yeah. uh, maybe in the summer, we'll do a, a summer vacation or something like that and, and take another look at it. But all of this news that we've just covered is all within the last month. And this yeah. stuff is, this hasn't exploded. been like a buildup of stuff from the year. This is, this yeah. is stuff that just, as Nick said, in the past couple of weeks, this has all been coming up. Uh, and, it's been perfect timing, but I think this is a technology that's really finally coming to fruition. I think the technology around it has finally been put to a point where it's doable, but also people have seen the, you know, Bitcoin and all these things in use and kind of see where the risks are and where the benefits are. And so I think we, we hit a point where we're finally comfortable enough. I think NFTs, people are still don't understand what they are enough to really give them a fair shake. But I think some of the others we're finally at a point where we can start throwing away the stuff that doesn't make sense and picking up the things that do. I think we're right on that track. Precisely. And now we wait and see. We see who does it right. We see who does it wrong. And at the end of the day, the consumers, you and I, will decide the winners and losers of how this whole thing is implemented and incorporated and see who wins and, and see who doesn't. So again, I want to mention we're not experts on this by any stretch of the imagination. Yep. If you are, know somebody that is and we've got some information incorrect or there's more to this that we, that we need to know, please, please let yeah. us know. And if we need to get a guest on the show or somebody to talk about it, we'd love to do that and continue this conversation. And I'll say this, Brian, yeah. as we head into the new year, I, we're going to start continue to sprinkle some of this blockchain stuff into our show. I know we're the survival podcast, but this is going to very much lead gaming in a, a certain direction. And I think it's important, and we'll be on the we'll be on the tip of the spear for that. Oh yeah, and I and that's that's what I'm excited for. I think this is kind of decentralizing gaming, which I've been I've been hinting at for a while now. Decentralizing gaming from these major providers, Xbox, Microsoft, or, or I mean Sony, uh, you know, just getting it to where the ownership of the game is not tied to Steam and and these different things, because that's the part that kills me. You're buying a license from a company for their game, but then you have to also tie it to some other platform just to get it. It's just the weirdest thing I've ever heard of. I think eventually licensing is going to get to where you own things again, because I think there's going to be a lot of uproar from this. When people realize they don't own things they have for real, they don't own them at all. And we've seen it because we deal with video games and everything where you get banned. <laughs> Tough luck, right? Yep. <laughs> you don't own That's that. So you're, just, you're just given the privilege to access that thing. I think once the people start to realize that, and um, and especially when they're starting to pay seventy five, hundred, one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars for a video game in the future, which is the direct we were already at seventy, right? We talked about that last week, a few weeks ago. Um, so this is something that I think is going to be huge. And 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 to people that are saying, hey, I'm not just like for me, I'm not a big Bitcoin guy. I just have no interest in it. But this right here, this is a use that I see interest in because for me. It's every day. This, this gets me, this solves some of the problems I, I've seen in the past with, this, with gaming technologies and servers and ownership because we don't own a single thing, just like music. What if you can buy music and own it forever? That's, it's all in this. I, it, it, we're going to start seeing these technologies flow out. So I'm looking forward to that. Do we have anything else we want to cover before we roll on out? 
or no sir i think we're good to go where can uh, people find you online well if you want to find me at brian aldrich on gab and parlor of course my blog biteoftech.com but you know before uh before the end of the year make sure you go to our website and you click join our server on discord because there we have links to uh, all of our arc servers to our workout channel we've got a news channel if there's a topic that we need to cover maybe you wanted to give uh some input or extra information regarding the topic we talked about today go through that in the news channel and we'll take a look at it uh if you want to catch the video form of the podcast maybe you were listening and, and you thought it might be helpful to see some of the things that we showed on the screen uh, you could do that through twitch youtube BitChute, and dlive um if you're going to listen you can go to the lower right hand side there pick the platform and device that you want to listen with uh and that's easy and free lots of choices for that if you are listening do go to the particular episode because we want to make sure that you get to see some of these references we had a lot of really good articles uh information a lot of things that we didn't actually cover but we'll keep in the show notes because it's a lot of outside information for some of the things that we've been discussing um, those will be in those show notes and that way you can follow along and read and see all that as we go if you want to support us there's a support option up top or infectionpodcast.com forward slash support prime gaming subs um subscribe star uh a lot of different ways that you can support us. And if you do that, we greatly appreciate it. So yes, and hopefully we, everybody had a Merry Christmas and soon a Happy New Year. Yes, we do very much appreciate it. And uh, Brian, thank you uh, for your time on this. Appreciate the uh, research yep. and looking into it. And um, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where this goes forward and uh, we'll continue to uh, keep an eye on here. So again, Brian, hopefully you had a Merry Christmas and a Happy thank New you. Year. And Brian, I have to say it. I'll, uh, I'll see you next year, Bride. <laughs> yeah, see you next year. <laughs> see you next year. Alrighty, guys. Uh, Brian, thank you very much. We'll catch up with you next week. Uh, if you want to uh, check me out online, you can do so by visiting my website, nickcraig.com. And of course, if you missed any portion of this program, you can head on over to our website. It's infectionpodcast.com. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Hopefully you had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we'll see you in 2022. Have a great week. <laughs>